Hi guys. Um, so this was perfectly set up for me. Thanks a lot uh, for talking about the mining centralization pressures. Um, my name is Kulpreet and I'm going to talk about some of the early lessons and some of the surprises that uh, we saw when we started to build Braidpool, uh, which is an attempt to build a peer-to-peer -peer mining pool for solving the centralization pressures earlier. So um, I'm going to kind of first talk, tell you a little story just to kind of motivate from another perspective why we need a peer-to-peer -peer pool coming back into the Bitcoin ecosystem. Then I'm going to talk about you know, the surprise that all the mining pools seem to be running proprietary software, why they run it, and you know, what kind of components, then later on talk about what kind of components we need to build as a community to kind of make a decentralized mining pool a reality today. So, my story is, if it's somebody here from the UK, they probably are know about this, but there was a big scandal in the UK where the post office and the postmasters had a bit of a, 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 a big problem going on, and I'll tell you about that now. So in the UK, the post office is a private company, which was a big surprise for me to find out that the postal service is privatized. Um, and the way it runs is post offices are run by postmasters who are actually business owners who are just running the post office services as, as a franchise. So what happened was um, the post office released a new software as a service, or as Stallman calls it, software substitute as a service. Um, and they forced the post offices to use the POS, uh, which talked to their SaaS to, to kind of do all the point of sales and all the other um, you know, transactions that they were doing. So what that resulted in was, um, surprise, surprise, the proprietary SaaS service had bugs in it. And the bugs were nasty ones in the sense that both pastors would, would, would close shop, go home with 10,000 pounds in their balance, come up next morning and it'll show 8,000 pounds. So money was disappearing from their accounts. And uh, they tried to call the, the post office, the corporation, to say, hey, there's a problem with, uh, with your software. And they repeatedly kept saying that our software is bug-free. There are no bugs, whatever the problems are, are on your end. You see where I'm going with this, right? Um, so they kept denying that they had software issues. Instead, they actually pushed back and they brought the postmasters to court saying that you've lost the money, you need to pay us the money back, and you would also get fines. And the court ruled in the favor of the corporation. So the poor, this was big chaos. There was like tens of thousands of postmasters who basically went bankrupt. Of course, you can imagine what happened to their lives. Eventually, last year, the UK government admitted to this was a, a, a blunder and they issued apologies and the post office eventually owned up. So the question in my mind is, are miners the UK postmasters in this situation, right? Are they trusting a software as a service, which is the pool to do all the accounting for them with no transparency, with no ability to see how they're being paid out, etc. Now, things are not as bad because they cannot lose money in this case. I mean, apart from like, you know, not earning as much as they should. So, so to, let's try to answer that question, right? Pools are running proprietary software, which essentially kind of is a SaaS and is a black box. You have no transparency on how the accounting is working. Um, so that's my next slide that, you know, they're just doing opaque accounting. You have no way to validate what they're doing. Some pools are trying to be more auditable, but it's really, it takes a lot of effort to kind of, um, figure out that you've been pay, paid as you should have been. So uh, pools also probably are offering different fee structures to, to miners. This is pretty classic. It happens in uh, shopping malls where the anchor store gets a discount on the rent. There's also um, uh, in trading shops when you when you go in to try to trade into a centralized exchange, you get a discount on the fees based on um, based on the trading volume that you're doing. The more, the more volume you trade, the, more, the, the lower the fees you paid. So it's likely, we're not saying that it does happen, but it wouldn't be a surprise if it doesn't happen. The other big scare is that miners can be kicked out or denied payments by centralized pools. Now, the pools might do it for their own reasons. They might want to do it also because some, pooler, some, some miners are misbehaving. That's fine, right? It's their, it's their prerogative. But the other thing is it's also possible that the regulatory authority tells them that they should not be 
paying out certain miners for whatever reason, right? So this is this remains a problem, and all this happens because pools are running proprietary software, and yet they still do so, and you wonder why, right? So let's try to figure why they do that. I kind of tried to think through this. My only solution is that it's dead easy to use the pools right now, right? You just plug in your machines, you put in a Stratum URL, and off you go. Like the talk earlier from Janet about um, running mining operations out in, in the backwaters in Kenya. Now, <laughs> they have a Starlink link. Uh, they're barely just maybe getting some messages in and out through Stratum. Uh, it's, it's, it's just easier for them to point their machines to a Stratum URL and, and be running. So w what do we need to build? And you know what should be our goals if we want a decentralized mining pool to be adopted by miners across the spectrum, right? Even the big miners out here in Texas or small miners out in Kenya or wherever we are, right? So for me, there's two things. One, we need to build a stack which is open source. Now, why do I say that? Because if you want to do my, if you want mining to be decentralized, you want to be people to be able to take the software and run it wherever they want, right? Imagine Bitcoin required you to get a license to run Bitcoin nodes. Now, that doesn't fly, so what we need is uh, the, the various stack, that uh, various components of the stack that kind of build a decentralized mining pool to be completely open source. There's two reasons for that. One, that you can just run it wherever you want, and secondly, the community is wiser than any private corporation, I imagine, right? So they can tweak and they can improve the various components of the stack as the need arises, right? And secondly, we need to be very careful in terms of incentives for miners, right? So we don't want them to come to a decentralized pool where they make less money than a centralized pool. That just won't fly. Nobody will adopt it. And in close to the incentives is the same question as of ease of deploying the pool, right? So we want them to be able to get a box, plug it into the network, and then point their machines, their ASICs machines, to uh, the Stratum URL on that box, right? That'll be the ideal case. And we want this to be as easy as possible. I, I mean, if, if, it's, if there's any friction, you know, Janet will not use us. So I want Janet to use our pool. <laughs> I hope she hears us. Um, so essentially, yeah, it's, this is more or less, I've kind of covered this already, that we just change the stratum URL and go, and there, you know, the, the pool has to be competitive with central pools. So just to step, take a step back and, and figure out which components we really need, and I'm, I mean, the purpose of, of my talk here is to kind of motivate some developers to kind of join the effort. So if you take a step back right now, this is the current architecture that people are using, right? So there is a pool operator in the middle, and there's a bunch of miners who are directly talking to the pool operator. And all these lines represent basically network connections, right? So that's what's happening right now. Um, all the miners just directly talk to the pool operator. Now in P2P pool and in braid pool, our goal is to go, to go to this, which is all the miners talking to each other and collectively figuring out what blocks to mine and you know what transactions to mine and then sharing the, the payouts in a, in a fair and transparent manner. So there's another possibility, which is like, Nobody's been working on this, but it's just an idea that came to me a few days ago that, you know, you could have a federation in the middle and, you know, you're not going completely decentralized, but you're going halfway there. But it doesn't matter what topology we work on, but what are the common components that we need to kind of build a decentralized pool in whichever configuration the, the community wants? So the one big thing is payout management, and we've been uh, racking our brains at Braidpool to figure out, uh, we have a couple of very good ideas, but we just need to make a final decision to go with which payout management to go. But whichever system we do, if we can kind of um, abstract it out so that if somebody else wants to put in a different payout mechanism, they can take the rest of the stack and they have a slightly different decentralized pool. So that's the kind of motivation to kind of drive this whole open source decentralized mining effort here. So the next thing is share accounting, right? Uh, when you get a when each miner is seeing all the shares that all the other miners are are, are generating, you need to be able to do uh, um, share accounting so that you figure out who earns how much reward and it should be consistent across the miners. So we need some system to do that, right? Ideally, it will be another component that can be reused and or tweaked as the need be. Then scalable share validation. Why do I insist on saying scalable here is? Because there is concerns that centralized pools are gen are getting a lot of shares from the um, 
from miners and they need to be able to keep up with the volume of traffic coming in and validation. So this might be, I mean, all these components are not rocket science. This is kind of plain, good old engineering effort and we just need to do that. That's why we need developers here. Um, and then finally, Stratum V1, V2, which was discussed in the last panel to extensive detail. I don't want to go there again, but we really need um, a well-tested, battle-tested kind of uh, implementation that we can use and, you know, have end users use. Um, so of these components, uh, we've kind of, we're kind of making progress on the payout management, as I said earlier. There is a couple of components to this. I might actually skip this, the details here, because I was told I'm kind of short of time. Uh, share accounting, you know, it's simple. You could probably throw in a, a in-memory or MemSQL database or something like that and, uh, you know, be done with it, you know, so that it's easy to deploy in a container and so on and so forth. All these are really easy things to do, but they just need to be done, tested, and proved that they can handle the scale that we want to be able to handle. It's just engineering. Um, so sh uh, share validation, this might could, could get interesting because if the traffics go high enough that we need to actually run a cluster, we need to think about how to deploy it, how to make it easy for, for the end miners, end, uh, end users at, um, at and Janet in Ken Kenya to be able to run all of this with a click of a button and does not have to worry about it too much, right? So we could use Docker or some other Linux container systems that are out there. I'm kind of conflicted between those two, but these are the things we need to decide and move on with. We also need Stratum V1 implementation because from my perspective, there's millions of machines out there running Stratum V1 and they probably have another five years life left on them. So if we need to kind of get some adoption, we need to be able to support them. The other answer is to be able to put, to put a proxy in the box and move on with life. But that proxy needs to be tested. So all these things need to be built. It's a surprise that very few of these components are there's, there's not a component, you can't use the component off the shelves and just compose this stack. You know, the way you can build a website today by using MySQL, you know, the good old LAMP stack. We can't do that for, for this. So we need to be able to get to a place where we have the initial version of the equivalent LAMP stack that people can innovate on, can tweak, and, you know, try different things with. So this is basically it. We need help to try out all these systems and uh, build all the systems. If you, if you have some bandwidth, please come along and help us. That's it. If you want to uh, reach out to me, I'm on X and on Signal. And um, thank you so much. Next year, we are bringing the Bitcoin Conference to the American West, Las Vegas. The brightest minds in the world will converge to deliver Bitcoin history. Buy your tickets now at b.tc slash conference slash 2025.